Brian, I'm now here with you. My name is Thomas and uh, I'm the founder of El Cambio. Can you introduce yourself a bit? My name is uh, Brian. People call me Brizzy, something my mom called me when I was young and now I just have the name from there. Uh, I live from football in a different way than others. I juggle with a football, I play on the streets. I also play on the grass once in a while. I play futsal with the national team in Denmark. So I try to play all the different kind of football that we have uh, and try to make a living from that. And now we are recording here from Copenhagen and just before you arrived, a lot of children were around and they asked me, why did you put up this camera for this and that? And when I told them that Brice is coming, they were all so excited and want uh, your signature and so on. Uh, what has happened? What has happened for you? Like, how did you get that famous, especially in Denmark? I think I was one of the first to take the freestyle football to another level. So it already started when I was young. And then I went to the television, TV2, the, the, one of the biggest channels in Denmark. They brought me in, did something every Monday. But then the social media started to come and I started to go on Facebook at first. And I got quite a big Facebook page in my country. Now it's international, so I have actually have over a million followers there. But in the beginning it was just Danish people. Over a million? Over a million. And then I started to go on Instagram. Uh, and also got over a million and now I'm on YouTube that's only in Danish and probably most of the kids know me from YouTube uh, also Instagram and Facebook of course that's amazing and I also know it's not something you just do overnight you have really worked hard to to reach this level you can say can you t take us through that journey of you know a lot of people around the world would love to have that many followers and find their passion can you can you put a few words on that well it all started just for fun. I was a young kid, just having fun with the football. I played 11 aside football when I was younger. I got injured and suddenly I saw a few videos of Ronaldinho doing a few tricks with the ball. And since I was injured, I could, couldn't sprint, but I could still juggle the ball, so I could still move. And I tried to do all these tricks. And after two months of training, I learned all these tricks that he did in the commercial. And I thought this was very cool. So when I came back to the field, uh, the football field, uh, I didn't really want to play. I thought it was a lot more fun to go in my backyard after school and just start to juggle the ball and do all these tricks. And I was one of the first in the country. And when the first really Danish national championship came as well, I, I was on top of it as well. And the next one as well. So, yeah, yeah. So it, it started just for fun. And yeah, I was at, at one point where I was like, should I keep doing this? Can I make a living from it? Because you know, you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your bills. And when the social media came in the picture, it, yeah, I found out I could make like, a, not just a living, but actually make like a big living. Uh, yeah, a decent living. Uh, I remember when I met you the first time, at that time you were 14, I think, around 14. And you came to an event, um, a street event, street football event. And I was amazed by what you could do already at that young age. Uh, but I also remember one quote from you. When I asked you, how did you become that good? You said, yeah, but when everybody else are going to train from their club, wh while they're there, I'm in my yard, I'm in my compound working. So it takes a lot of hard work. Yeah, it's actually the same thing. They went together playing as a team and I went to the backyard. But what people doesn't realize is that in one training, just juggling the ball or playing on the streets, I have more touches on the ball that the regular football players have like for a month just by one training. But some people would then argue that it's a bit boring because most people they will join a team and have this social thing going on but for you most of the time you have been home. Don't you think you miss out on some social thing or? Probably yes but I have like if I, if I find it funny and I really like to do it then I keep on doing it forever and if it starts to get boring well then I have to try to find something new but I try to keep push my level try to be better every day and when you set some goals uh, I think it's about you know setting some small goals and then go after that and when you reach that you try to set a new one that's how I keep myself motivated and just keep on practicing. So you really have to be self-motivated to to do what you do because you don't depend on others really you depend on only yourself and your work ethic and that's actually takes me to something else because something new you have established now for the younger generation is called Brise FC so now from being just you, doing your things, becoming popular and famous, now you are doing something totally new. What is Brise FC? Is it a new football club? 
well, you you can say so, but it's 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 an online football club. I think it's the only one in the world. To be honest, I'm not sure if if anyone else did it somewhere else. But we try to bring all the beautiful kind of football, what you call it, sports that you can play and put it one place. So also we have beach soccer guys on the team. We have the world champion in football golf. But the thing is, the media eh, they don't really want to focus on these sports because there's no money there. And when there's no money, there's no money for the television. You know, most of them think about the money. And I'm like, I want to use my platform, my social media to give them the credit they deserve because these guys work as hard as the professional footballers, sometimes even more. Now you met some of the kids and they train two, three, four, five, maybe six hours a day. And you know, they don't get the support as the professional does. And I think it's wrong that it's only the professional that get that support. Of course, it's fine that they get it because they work hard as well, but I also think someone playing on the streets, playing in the sand should get the same amount of attention as these guys. So I want to use my platform to help these guys. And your platform brings a lot of young boys and girls together. Like today, we just spent a few hours just behind us. We have this football center and I saw the happiness, the joy of all of them sharing their tricks. And then they try it out and they record each other. And then I'm pretty sure that they post it on their platforms. So I'm pretty sure that what you didn't have when you were young, you were by yourself. You have now created a community where freestylers, especially in Denmark, can come together. Uh, how does that make you feel? Uh, it feels good. Uh, it's just great to be able to help these kids. I think I'm trying to give them something that I didn't really have when I was young. Something I wish I had when I was young, the support, because to be honest, in the beginning when I started to do tricks, people thought I was weird. It was weird back then doing tricks in your backyard. If you see a kid doing tricks now, it's not that weird anymore, but to keep them motivated, uh, that's not always easy. So we try to build this community, this team, to make all these kids who really, really want it, keep them motivated and play with them together and find the, the joy. You just met them and you can see the, the smile on their faces, you know. They've only known each other for a few months, but it seems like they've known each other for years. And that's and sure the kind of the friendship they get. And for sure they are pushed because now they feel like a part of something bigger than just themselves. So yes, they are put on platforms like yours and their own social platforms, but it also must boost their confidence, their motivation to do more of it. And also their skills and their yeah, yeah football ability on the bigger field Scale. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know that's actually something that you have always said that yes, one thing is that they can do what we call air moves or ground moves, but they can have their training, but to combine it into the normal training. And this goes out to, you can say all the elite football clubs or maybe not even a elite, but in general that why don't we try to connect those two worlds? If you can separate them, if say two worlds, but bring some of this freestyle into the football, how do you see that? What would any footballer gain in a young age to start out doing all this freestyle and bring it to the normal football? Well, if we look at some of the players we have now and some of the former players, we had Ronaldinho, my favorite of all time. He started in the streets. He played in the streets. Probably he started to play in a football, in a normal football club when he was maybe 14 or 15. In Denmark, he started when you're four. So he was playing on the street, the same as Neymar, and they learn everything they know on the street, all the individual mm. things, all the dribbles or how to shoot and you know, and then they take it on the football field. But first they, they, they played on the streets and they learned everything there. So that's something I want to give to the Danish people. I want to be able to help the future of mm. Danish football as well, uh, making people better with the ball. Better with the ball. Is it also for you to make football more entertaining for, for everybody around? Because you know, you can sometimes see a team that just passes a pass, but you don't see anyone who is really special in what they do and can surprise the other team. Is that also something you want to see in the game of the future? I want a new Ronaldinho yeah. coming from Denmark and maybe even more, not just one. So yeah, that's something I, I really want to I want to see in the future. Of course, we just started the project. It's, when this is recorded, it's probably four months old this project uh, so hopefully in two or three years we start already there to see better people here in Denmark. I'm pretty sure the way they work and the way you can inspire them it's gonna it's gonna happen one day. Now we have talked a bit about how you have reached to this level and what you are doing with your own brand bringing in uh, boys and girls uh, to inspire to a, to a better football uh, you can say. Now you are also a part of the Cambio Academy and you have actually been visiting us once. Now, first place, why did you find El Cambio interesting? 
Well, first of all, we've known each other for many years, so that was a, not the main reason, but I, I know when you set up yourself for something, I know you're going all in. So that was one of the things and one of the reasons why I wanted to go there. But also I saw a, thing on the, a few things on the social media, how you played football with these kids, how good they were. And I thought to myself when I saw this video, I really want to see that. I want to see how is this universe and how is it in Africa? I've been to South Africa, I've been to Egypt, but that's, that's not the same thing as coming to Uganda. So I told myself and my girlfriend, we, wanted to, we had to go there at some point. And yeah, we came there last year. Yeah, a year ago you came uh, with maybe an idea of what it was um, and you knew me on beforehand, but uh, you reached what uh, did you expect and also what did you experience? Well, the whole ride there was an experience. Uh, landing in the airport, uh, getting out of the airport, driving from the airport to the, the academy. I mean, all the roads, uh, you drive through Kampala, so crowded and you know, just that was an experience. And the traffic there is, is crazy. I mean, it's, it it's not a place I wanted to drive myself. So if I come, of course, when I come back again, I'm not going to drive myself because that was, that was an experience itself. And yeah, when I came to the academy, all the kids, they came to me and gave me a hug and made me feel welcome. And just from there, I just knew this is, this is a place that we could spend a lot of time. We were only there for five full days, I think, but we could have stayed there for two or three, maybe even more months. So you can say that maybe you came for the football part mainly, but the first thing that strikes you, as you mentioned now, is the hawk. What does that make you feel like and what did you see like the environment besides football? Let's get to the football part later. But how was it to be around the children there? They were so happy. I mean, even though they don't really have that much, they seem so happy. <laughs> and I mean, people in Denmark and in other countries, especially in Europe, we can learn a lot from these kids. I mean, they don't really have much. They have a, they have a football and they don't care if it rains or if they get dirty. I remember me and my girlfriend, we got away from the rain, but these kids were just playing in there. And I was like, well, if they do, I have to do it as well. So I went out in the rain to, to play with them. But that's something we can learn, especially here in Denmark, that sometimes I, f I feel like we're having it too good in Denmark. I mean, we have so many opportunities when we get to the teenage level, we start to get, we can get a PlayStation, we can, you know, we can do everything here in the country. Mm. Uh, and they are so happy, even though they don't really have anything. That was very inspiring. Very nice. And that's also what most people are telling me when they come to El Cambia and they get to know our athletes, football players, that this is different and we can learn so much from it. That's why a lot of people are traveling our uh, way. Now, um, to the football part, uh, I know that you came with a freestyle idea and just before you came like two weeks before I told all the players that why don't we practice a bit because they are not used to to do the freestyle to be honest they are used to play as everybody else but within two weeks we prepared them for for your stay what did you see when you come when you came to El Cambio in terms of freestyle of course it was easy to see that they probably hadn't been training for maybe two or three years, they just started to, to train with the ball, but they could juggle the ball, they could do a few tricks. But what I noticed was how fast they learned with the ball. I mean, I gave them a challenge and maybe 30 minutes after they completed it. And you know, that doesn't usually happen in Why do Denmark. you think that happened? Maybe they're just, you know, they're so happy. And when they get a challenge with the ball, they just go out and they smile and they have fun with it. It's not like they think, oh, I have to get this done to get in and eat. You know, they, they have to get it done because they want to. Mm -hmm. And they feel like this is so funny. So I think the mentality and the way they're just motivated to keep trying the same thing. That's And don't you think also a big obstacle for most uh, children when they're trying these skills is not to look like a failure, not to do mistakes. So I, I wonder if that could also come into the picture with our boys at El Cambio that they don't feel that, they don't have that kind of fear maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. When they got the ball and they dropped it, they just took it back up and they tried again. And after 30 minutes, we just talked about they, they did the trick. So that was very impressive. Yeah, and they, this is something that we really work hard upon, that it is free. Our environment should always be free with a lot of love and we embrace the children. They are allowed to do mistakes and we just keep on pushing, trying again and again. And we recorded at that time uh, a few videos. Uh, some of them went viral and we got a lot of attention suddenly. So in this way, you have helped El Cambio a lot um, because we are now well known around, um, es yeah, especially in Uganda. Uh, so the thing is that you came, you set up your skills and our boys became so happy. They just kept on doing it 
We've recorded more videos. We are now spread to all of Uganda, and we see children trying to do the same skills as a Cambio. And so they want to be part of it. They the... want to be a part and want to try it out. When we go to different matches, we always tell the boys to go to those small groups of children that have no ball or whatever, but bring them into the game and have fun with them. Uh, and not feeling shy or... No, that's nice. It is good. And, uh, and I think it's more or less the same that you try to do here. So I think we are on the same path. Yeah, it's funny because all the kids now, not all of them, but back in the days, everyone wanted to play for FC Copenhagen and Bonbu. But now most of the kids, most of the young kids, they want to be part of Brisbane FC. So that's already there. We made something cool. It's so interesting. It's interesting that you can make a, 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 another part in football that could also be something that turns on for other children because so many children goes to the normal football you can say but you can also have some subcultures where people are digging into and then suddenly forget a bit about or maybe not forget about it but gain from that and take it to that other field and that's what you do uh, hey we try to what about uh, the future what is it uh, ahead for you uh, what lies ahead for you when it comes to El Cambio what would you like to do how would you like to help the Academy grow of course now we are we're getting a kid yeah, so we're getting a little boy, so we're going to spend a lot of time there. And we wanted to go to El Cambio this year, but of course of the COVID, uh, the corona, we, we couldn't make it. Uh, but of course we want to we wanna get back uh, in the future and try to help the kids be even better w w with the ball uh, through tricks. And maybe next time we also take it on the streets to try to teach them a few things there. And of course we want to um, help spread the word uh, to the whole country. Now it's probably most known in Uganda and maybe in Denmark as well because we made a lot of videos. But you started to get shared on the social media uh, a few days ago when this is recorded. We got shared as well together actually. And you can, you can just see how that makes your, especially your Instagram, just grow and uh, yeah, hopefully I can make it even bigger uh, and hopefully one day we can maybe get like a million followers or something on El Cambio, who knows? And actually the thing is that it's not just to have a lot of followers, it is no. to inspire others. And that's what we have in common, that it's not just for you to have 1.3 no. or whatever million. It is then we have a platform to do what we love and bring something good to the world, I would say. Yeah. It's good to have a lot of followers because then you can inspire more. So that's what it's more about, not just having followers. If you get a lot of followers by doing something silly, I mean, that's not cool, that's not inspiring. But if you keep doing what you do mm. and try to inspire, inspire people all the way through and then you get to a million, I mean, that's something I, I find very cool. So you stick to your thing and mm. keep inspiring the people. What do you dream of? So in terms of your own project with Bris AFC, with a, yeah, your whole company and yourself, now a kid is coming in your your way, but what about for El Cambio? Which kind of dreams do you have? I mean, at home, of course, I want to change the, 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 the football mentality. I want to make it more fun, mm. even to watch, but also to play, that the kids need to, to enjoy the game more. And yeah, with the El Cambio, uh, as I said, I wanted to, to go there uh, more and maybe we together can maybe take it to other countries as well, I, I don't know, make it even bigger, uh, try to make what you do, but also what I do uh, around more countries in Africa or South America, whatever, are all around the world. It's amazing because um, we all share this ambition. We have other ambassadors with us. We have different people who really want to invest in this in different ways. And if it wasn't for all of you, all the different people that I have invested that time, you came out to us, we wouldn't have reached this far. So I'm well aware that we need a lot of people to help us uh, in this, to, to grow it. And I would love to see one of our players play for one of the biggest team in Europe, doing the skills, making us all happy, cheer, and inspire other children to do the same while they are having this good character. What does character mean to you? Because this is, uh, we have three pillars at El Cambio. We have football, we have education, and then we have character. What does character mean to you? Because for me, it's not enough that one of our children are playing for, is playing for Barcelona if he only thinks of himself. He needs to think back of all the children that are still behind. Well, one of the first things I tell the, the kids coming into the team, because when they start to be part of the team, I know they're going to get a lot of followers. Mm -hmm. And what they, I don't really want them to do is, you know, make everything more about getting followers you know they need to stick to the to the game they need to stick to train with the football that's what makes them grow mm -hmm. not doing something silly just to get followers and you know not to 
make them think they're better than other people. You know, I want them to stay on, on the ground and, you know, be, be themselves. Yeah. Be like when I met them, mm. not try to be something, someone they're not. Yeah. Try to, to be, be humble, yes. Yeah, it's really, really good. And uh, I think when they are already now having that position, people are looking up to them. So now they actually have that platform to inspire others because when they were not known, no one looked at them. No. Now they actually, together with our children at El Cambio, we all have this, we share this kind of position, you can say, but let's use it for something better. And this is something you also talk to them about. Also teach them to be good to other people. Yeah. You know, just don't look down on them because they only have 200 followers. I mean, and they're very good, just like you said, they, and you bring the children to some other people who doesn't have a football or just stand in the corner, you know, go over to them and show them some skills, try to teach them some skills, you know, mm. make them happy as well, prove the football. And actually what the, I just joined your team down here where we trained a little bit and to be fair, I can do something, but I'm not half as good as they are, <laughs> but I tried something and they still gave me that applause yeah, and feeling yeah. like, let's do it again, Thomas, let's do it again. And they don't care if you're good or not, they will still play with you. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I really like and that's also what I, try to emphasize to, to the, the players at El Cambio that, hey, we are a group of people. Yes, we are in a special environment. Yes, we are gifted and we work hard, but let's inspire others along the way. Pues, it was nice to have you here in the, the blue chairs. And, Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was nice to talk about what you are doing, what we are doing together. And for sure, I'm sure that all the viewers, they can now tell that we have so many things in common. We want to make a change. Um, as El Cambio, it means change in Spanish. Thank you so much, please. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you.